today we'll be upgrading our 3D printed submarine, the CPS-5, to be extremely fast. This is the old one, and this is the new one. Um, yeah. Right now the drone is working great and all, but it's barely as fast as a human. You could actually say it's as fast as Michael Phelps, like open ROV said about their underwater drone called Trident. Shout out. But I've actually done some research and do you realize how slow Michael Phelps is? He's only 2.1 meters per second. A turtle is faster than him at 2.7 meters per second. A turtle. We are truly pathetic, like really, as a human species. Here's how the race would look like in real time. Alright, so I guess our goal for our 3D printed submarine is to beat a turtle. So the drone is about 2 meters per second right now. By the way, we've previously designed our drone especially so that these types of modifications are possible. You can see how it's made from scratch in our last video, you can watch it after this one. And also we have an online course teaching you how you can build it yourself, link in the description. So right now the idea is to throw out the old 200 watt motors and plug in the biggest motors we could find. Maybe even 4 meters per second is possible. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Quite a big bigger. Yeah. Obviously it's not as simple as that. Let's create a plan of action. First of all, the motors are way too big as of right now. We need to redesign the back of the drone so that they can be attached. That's task number one. Number two, we need to find big propellers for these motors. The third step we need to find compatible electronic speed controllers. It will be very fun, trust me. Then we need to assemble everything and then have fun testing it. Let's begin. So what I'm thinking right now is to attach the motor on the outside of the drone right here. And that's what I did. I'm designing an extension which will hold the motor at its very end and screw it into the main rear part of the drone using three screws in these places. This means that the only thing I'll need to replace are these motor hubs. Alright, so after some work we've ended up with the first prototype design of what we've called the CPS-5S. And S stands for speed. This is like a normal CPS. Mm -hmm. And this is the CPS. I mean, it's still <laughs> normal, but it just... <laughs> now let's 3D print it. Let's see if it fits. Peter? Look at this. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? Whoa. But it's actually pretty solid. Yeah, now I'll try to attach the propeller. We plan to make a lot of videos like this in 2023, so if you enjoy videos like this, let us know by subscribing and liking this video. Thank you. Now, propellers. If you are an engineer working on a propeller design, you know that it's actually not that easy to make a good propeller. There are a ton of variables such as your desired speed and power of the motor, which will determine what's the ideal diameter of the propeller, its pitch, profile, etc. We are not experts, so previously we've ignored the profile of the propeller and designed a simple one that is good enough for us. 
55mm diameter and 40mm pitch. This time, however, we needed something more beefy, so we went to experts we knew at our university. <laughs> Alright, maybe not that beefy. Mm -hmm. After searching around, they gave us these propellers. We got the propellers, <laughs> which are actually used in military drones, specifically this one. <laughs> Here's the drone smashing into the back of it so we can see better. The diameter is about 95 millimeters and the pitch is about 90. Now the challenge is how to mount these to the motors. They are a little bit too tall, so I think we'll need to cut them right here. The height is correct. Now let's make the hole for the shaft larger. All right, now these fit. ESC stands for Electronic Speed Controller. It's a device that controls the speed of the motor by adjusting the amount of power the motor receives. Our ESCs in the drone work up to 25 amperes, and these motors will definitely need more. So, I thoroughly searched the web for these 50 amp BL Heli ones. Let's connect them to the motor to see if they work. Please solder this together. <laughs> Is that dangerous or what? <laughs> That's only for tests, alright? Alright. I think it works. Yep. Yeah. Now we can print and assemble the right side. And also the propellers, of course. And now test again with the propellers. But meanwhile, Peter noticed something very important, actually. <laughs> and I agreed with him. So I decided to reprogram the CSCs to play something cooler when the drone turns on. <laughs> Alright, so now we need to put the CSCs into the main electronics pipe. Here I am opening the electronics pipe and soldering the ESCs in the right place. However, while recording this I had a major problem. I only had an hour 15 minutes until we needed to show up at the pool we scheduled for the tests. And I still need to assemble all of this, so this needs to be fast. By the way, I'm also using our online course to guide me through this final assembly, since it's exactly the same. And with two minutes to go, I start cutting the buoyancy foam. This will attach to the back of the drone, offsetting the additional weight of the motors and keeping the drone neutrally buoyant. But well, I didn't have time to record that. Zapomniałem o tym. Okay. Co bierzesz ten mikrofon? Nie, nie słuchaj. Nie. Ok, here's the computer. And here's the drone. Let's see this. Alright, Philip, he's gonna swim with his drone. By the way, are you doing 100% gain from the start? Not really, because... Well, I don't know, then maybe you've messed the setup up. 
Hold on, folks. We'll be back. It wasn't faster at all. As a matter of fact, we raced it against our normal CPS5 version, the green one, and it was almost slower. At least we found the lost hex key at the bottom of the pool, which the pool supervisor was looking for. We had some theories about why the drone is so slow, but this yeah. slow-mo footage explains it all. Can I check the slow motion footage? This is the slow mo guys. <laughs> Whoa, look at it. Alright. But uh, it will be later in the video when you go from below water to above. See, oh, yeah. See this? I can actually see every turn, yeah. And now up. You can count how many revolutions per minute that is, but mm -hmm. that's second to none. When I take it off, it wait a second. Oh, yeah. look at this. Right, all right. This just has two speed modes. Not go and go. <laughs> so. Okay, let's break it down. The speed of the motor in the water is clearly limited. This can be either because the propeller creates way too much drag, the motor is not made for low speeds, or the ESC limits the output power. The last option would be the best, since it would be probably just a matter of reprogramming the ESC. Either way, let's get out of here. Alright, we learned something. Now our plans need to change slightly. First I need to build a testing rig, then find out what's causing the problem and fix it. Alright, let's do this again. For the testing rig I'll need the motor with the propeller of course, but also a servo controller, some cables, Arduino and an ESC, same as one in the drone. And I forgot to mention the battery, 12 volts. This is it. With that, the same problem is occurring. The propeller is way faster when out of the water. So, let me check the first potential issue, which would be the easiest to solve, which is programming the ESC. Alright, so good news. There's this setting called Low RPM Power Protect, which was on by default. I'm not 100% certain that the ESC in the drone has this setting on as well, but when I turn it off, the motor seems to be way more aggressive. It limits the maximum amount of power the motor can receive, and while swimming in the water, the motor needs a lot of power. So let's test it now. Ah! <laughs> the wires are hot. The wires are so hot. <laughs> I also found another setting. Slightly higher ramp up power can benefit your drone as it pushes the motor harder. Note that higher ramp up power can make your motors run hotter too. That's boring. 150. Oh well. You're actually gonna I... do that? The drone is gonna explode underwater. So I will test it now and see if ah, it's. Alright, if it explodes. Yeah, if it's explosive. Yeah, then it makes faster. sense. Okay. Yeah. Never mind then. I'm thinking. Thinking. Ah! <laughs> See? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. <laughs> this testing rig has a lot of thrust now, but at the same time both the SC and the cables are getting very hot pretty quickly. Ah, ah, ah! Ah, the, the SC is super hot. However, we very scientifically decided that it's not a problem, since the drone itself is cooled by water. For the record, changing these two settings would probably end up frying the motors, 
if it wasn't for the water. So what I essentially need to do right now is to open the drone once again, uh, open the electronics pipe and reprogram the ESCs. Yeah, so that should be it and then we can test the drone once again. I'm hoping to see that these two settings I've just tested are set to default in the drone and I can change them, which would make the drone way faster. All right, so this is the moment of truth. <laughs> I forgot about this. All right. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, this is exciting. We can turn off. I can turn this off. And now our drone is maybe four meters per second. <laughs> Let's test the drone. I'm quite positive that the drone is way faster now. We couldn't schedule the bigger pool immediately, so we went to the people who made that military drone, that one, to see what they think about CPS 5S. And test this improved version for the first time. <laughs> Ale nie wali się go boję, wiesz? Nie wali w ścianę przypadkiem. Zrobić się są dobre. Tak, tak, tak. It was fast, but we didn't expect that. Clear for takeoff? Yep. Tak dosłownie centymetr było od tego metalowego to. Do turtles jump out of the water? I don't think so. As you can see, this tank was a little too small for us. So in order to verify whether we are faster than a turtle, we needed to go to the bigger pool. <laughs> As you'll see later, more space for more speed turned out to be a double-edged sword. <laughs> huh? ah! All right, so um, we had a couple of minutes of fun before I smashed into the wall. The camera in the drone wasn't recording, but miraculously, another camera recorded the screen from afar. What? These red dots are parts of the front of the drone. Hmm. No. Well, at least we can play some more. It still swam pretty well, though, so we recorded its speed from the top and then decided to jump out of the water some more. Guess what happened here? Flip wpłynął w ścianę. Flip wsiadł, wsiadł do Porsche 911 i pierwszą rzeczą, którą zrobił, to wjechał w barierkę. Uwaga. No. Już wszystko rozwaliście? Tak. One could say CPS 5 was too fast for its own good. And they would be right. No. Leave it, it's suffering. All right. So now the important part. Was it faster than a turtle? Did you see that? It was a turtle there. For real though. The best shot we got which could be used to measure the speed is this one. Therefore, after very scientific measurements of the speed, <laughs> I've concluded that it reached three meters per second. This is how it would look like if we swam past a turtle. And that was with a smashed front, I would like to remind you. Okay, hold up. I truly don't know how have I missed that, but if you search how fast is a turtle again, the maximum speed is 35 kilometers an hour, almost 10 meters per second. We've uploaded the CPS 5S version of our drone to our DIY course as well. In the course, we share all of our knowledge about underwater drones and guide you through the assembly process of the CPS 5 step by step. So if you'd ever want the fastest DIY underwater drone, it's there in this lesson.